Welcome back to another episode of Vulnerability Time. We are officially here in Season 5. Uh, it's great to be back. Okay, a couple things before we get started. Uh, one, please uh, share this podcast. You never know whose life you're going to save by just sharing the podcast. Two, please leave a review of the podcast on Apple Podcast or wherever you're listening to your podcast from. Please leave a review. Uh, it really helps the algorithm. It really helps the podcast, you know, get more noticed and all that good stuff. And third thing, so in the episode description below, we will have the video podcast link. So if you're uh, wanting to watch the video interaction, uh, please click in the episode description below and you will find the YouTube link. And with that being said, let us get started with whatever episode this is going to be, because I, I don't know um, what the episode is going to be right now, because this is a pre-recorded intro. Yes, yes. <laughs> Alrighty, with that being said, welcome to Season 5 of Vulnerability Times. We love a pre-recorded intro. Uh, finally, folks. Okay, real quick before we start this episode, y'all, my book is out. Oh, um, cannot see it correctly on the camera. Almost there. Uh, it's almost there, but that's okay. Y'all will be able to see it at the end because I have it as its own little um uh, ad towards the end of the episode. Just to let y'all know it's a self awareness journal. Um, it's interactive. Uh, it has very thought-provoking prompts. If you think you know yourself, or, it, like, yeah, if you think you know yourself, definitely, it, y y you'll see that, you know, we're always able to continue to learn ourselves and grow. How about that? These are very thought-provoking prompts. This is... Um, it also has little air, you know, I say all of this at the end, but go ahead and buy my book, folks. It's a journal with interactive prompts. It's called Wounds into Wisdom, Self-Awareness Interactive Journal Notebook with Prompts by yours truly, Josias Avery. Anyways, oh my God, yes. So, Eric, our special guest of this episode, it is your world, we're living in it. What's up, Eric? Not much. Just doing some some practicing like usual. Uh, thanks for inviting me on your podcast on yes, vulnerability dude. time. Yes. Thanks for coming. Okay, so Eric, so uh, before we start in our topics, um, um, tell us a little bit about you. It's my understanding that you just recently graduated, and in uh, in what major, and that also you just got. Uh, accepted and got a huge offer into one of those schools. But go ahead, and, yeah, go ahead and tell us a little bit, Eric. Yeah, so this past semester I graduated in uh, December of 2023. So right now I'm just I'm on dead time, so I'm I'm just waiting it out until grad school. But uh, I've been taking auditions, I've been practicing, I've been composing, just keeping myself busy. Yes. Since so what did you graduate much, in? Huh? What did you graduate in? Music performance. Gotcha. Okay. And you and you compose stuff, right? Like, okay, okay. Tell us a little bit about that for those of us who don't know what compo who's not too familiar what composing um uh music means. Because a lot of people think it's just like, oh, lyrics, but also it could be Yeah, like the process of like note making. Yeah, I just use a software yeah. with a, uh, it's called Finale. So I use that process. And uh, if I didn't tell you guys, I'm, I'm a percussionist. So that's mainly what I compose for. I compose for like various percussion instruments, but that's what I've been using with my time. I just, every time I get an idea, I just write it out. I write it out. So whatever I feel, you know, whatever I feel inside, I'm just like, okay, 
let me write it out. Maybe I'll feel better. And that yes. usually, it works. It actually works. Give us a couple examples of what percussion instruments are, Andrew. I could show you my, my room, actually. Yes, go ahead. If you have the bowl of this. Yes. Ain't nobody seen my so, room. It's nice. Here's my snare drum. I just bought this this weekend, actually. Um, this marimba, it costs like a thousand dollars. It was, it took a hit. It took a hit out of my, my bank account, but it was worth it. I use this for grad school, like for auditions. And I'm borrowing this xylophone from my, my old high school. Yes, just record it. Yeah. So and then right here, I have this tiny, this tiny glockenspiel. Is that really what it's called? Yeah. Wait, really? Glockenspiel? Yeah. German for oh, bells. Epic. Oh, shut up. That is epic. What? I've never heard of that. That is so cool. But yeah, I, I take I take my time, you know, with composing just on on these instruments right here that I have. Is you know, there anywhere the, the we can go are... check out your music? Like do you have it um on like a website yet or anywhere we can Sadly, check I, out? I do yet? not. I do okay, not. not yet. Not yet. Yeah, okay. I'm. I'm just doing it. I'm doing it for fun. Yes. But then I'm also taking it more seriously now. Yes. So I want to, yes. you know, keep composing. I think the goal right now is to compose like five pieces for different instruments, yes. and then just see what I can use with those. Maybe put it on a website in the future, or maybe try to get it published. Yes. Oh yes, but I need go. I need a lot of they need a lot of work. Yeah, I got to yeah. edit them like a just a lot, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Takes time. Takes yeah, time. it's you know for the three months I've been out of school, I've done pretty pretty well with keeping myself honest and you know trying to compose mm -hmm. every day. Just try to do something, even even if it's a little bit. That's better than than nothing, you know. Okay, and you also got accepted into some grad schools, and one of them had like a huge uh, offer, right? Go ahead and tell us uh, what uh, school and stuff before we start our topics. So I, I auditioned at Baylor, Oklahoma City University, um, James Madison University, uh, Campbellsville University, and then University of Delaware. So I think, I think all of them besides University of Delaware accepted me, yeah. and Oklahoma City University. That that's the one that's offered me the most. Yeah, like it's pretty much like I think seventy five percent of the tuition, which is not bad yeah. you know, for two years. That's that's all I need. Like I just need. Oh, <laughs> that's like not bad need, at all. It's good to have money coming in. Yeah. Just going yeah. to grad school. Yeah. Like any amount. Any amount is good. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That is huge. That's not bad at all, dude. That is great. I love how nonchalantly you said that. Dude, that's huge. <laughs> that is I, huge. Oh, I'm, my I'm gosh. Excited. I'm excited about it. It's just, I don't know. I, I can't believe it sometimes. Yeah. I like know. When I, I know. It. Yeah. Dude. Yeah, you're worth it, man. You're worth it. Thank no, you. I appreciate it. I, I do want to, um, uh, everyone to be mindful that, yes, Eric did tell me this beforehand. However, uh, the reactions are still pretty real because I'm, I'm me and Eric have gotten close over the past uh, few months. And, you know, just as, see that you know these offers come his way um and these opportunities open up it it's exciting every time so um still still very authentic reactions all right okay yes um okay so i had to take a i had to pause the episode for literally like 30 seconds folks to go get us some aqua because we want to remain hydrated 
Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Don't um, worry. I got my cup of water too. Yes. Right yes. 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 Um. Okay. So Eric. Okay. So the thing about so folks, I I have a silicone straw. Of course, it's pink. Um. It, we're taking the eco, the e eco uh straws by storm. Get you some silicone straws. Okay, but okay, but those metal straws, those reusable metal straws. Okay, I I like the idea of it, but I always wondered like, well, it, I don't I don't like how do you clean inside of it other than like those dip little, it in dishwater or something. There's gadgets for it. I mean, the ones you were talking about where you just like dip it in the straw. I can't really? explain. They have, like these these things that you just put it through the straw and you can clean it. Oh, I'm not giving them any more of my money. I was talking about uh, if you just dip the whole straw in like dish soap or something. But that, that, that does sound pretty efficient to have like a little, a little, you know, a little thing of a bob. Yeah, a little thing of a bob. I'm not giving them any more of my money. Um, I didn't even give them any money for the silicone straw. I, I got this for free. I, I just saw it in my cabinet one day. There's like a pack of them, and I took it uh, just now. And I've been eyeing them, but I've been looking for a reason to use it. It's great to debut it on a podcast. Silicone straws, everyone. Yes, yes, and they come in many colors. Yes, because you don't want to just drink water. You want to you want to feel, you know, aesthetic and cute while you do it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, okay, so our first topic is the process of acceptance. Ah. Uh, that took a lot of energy for me to say. Eric why did you pick that topic? Like, how does that relate to you? Why that topic? What is your process of acceptance? Also, all three of those things combined. Hmm. So I, I picked it because there, there was a lot of uh, life events I've been through in the past year. And they really, they tested me in terms of how to accept it. Because some of these things you can't change. You know, whether it's it's death or it's, uh, you know, a relationship you can't go back to. Let's talk about it, yeah. And even, you know, with, with these auditions, too, uh, getting, getting uh, sorry, getting thrown out by University of Delaware. Mm -hmm. It sucked, but I accepted it because it's very, very competitive. Delaware, okay, okay, Delaware. It's, you know, those three things, they tie together. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I know in, in uh, July, or in, no, in May, I lost my childhood dog of like 14 years. Oh, and oh. Yeah, it was very, very traumatic. Just, I, I don't really want to go into it because it's... Uh, yeah. It's rough, but uh, we tried to save her, but it it was it was her time. It was her time. Right. And you know that's the second time I had to deal with death because I lost my other childhood dog in the same month, two years prior. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of like a it was more traumatic because it was the same day, two years apart. Right. Same day, same month. Yeah. Yeah. So it, yeah. it was. It felt familiar. So that yeah. second time, it made me. It made it easier to process it and accept it. How long um, did it t t take you to? And this could just be anything. How long, uh, at first, did it take you to? Uh, uh, accept or fully accept um i i ask that because um i know for me i can feel like i'm doing something wrong if i don't 
if I'm not able to fully accept something hard in that same second. Like, it's like, I, I can... Yeah. This, I, and I feel like maybe a lot of people can relate to, you know, uh, for, exa for example, when it comes to, like you said, a loss of any kind, whether it's the loss of a normal, loss of relationship, loss of a family member, a friend, you know, a loss in general. And, and I don't necessarily mean grieving when I s say this. I mean just that process of acceptance. Um, I know for me, I was just like, wow, it's three months and I'm still struggling to, you know, accept it. I'm aware of it. I acknowledge it. But it's just like, I... It's just like, mm, I'm like almost... I, it's not like I'm not trying to accept it, but sometimes I feel like, um, you're stuck. I can, yeah. Or I can, yes. And I can get down on myself because it's like, oh, it's three months and I still haven't accepted. But even though like I came like the process of acceptance, it has progressed. I, I don't know. The question is, <laughs> question is, um, did it take you a long time? And could you relate to what I was saying? Yeah. Yeah, because I know with my, my Dotson, you know, the first one I lost, um, that one just, I felt lost, you know, for, for a while. I felt lost because it was unexpected. You know, I was like, I got more years with her. Because she was like nine. She was nine years old. And that was it. Like in an instant, just gone. And it tore my world apart, you know? Yeah. And that took me, I want to say that took me the whole year. Because even, even now, I look back and it just, it's all good memories, but it just sucks, you know? That I couldn't really right. be there for her in her better, her better days. Now, for my, my second dog, the one I, I lost recently, uh, that one I I accepted faster. That one took maybe if I had to guess three months. Yeah. Because then then I started to worry about school. School became the new the new thing to worry about. So it took three months for me with with her with my my Chihuahua because um, it was her time. You know, she was fourteen. And that's that's about the average lifespan of a Chihuahua, mm -hmm. and I I could accept it better. Right. Hard. It's still hard now, but right. I can accept it. Yes. So would you say that it is okay to be patient with yourself in the process of acceptance? Absolutely. Yeah. If you, if you beat yourself up over how you feel, you know, even three, six months later, it's going to make it worse. And I learned that the hard way. Cause not, not only did it destroy me, but it also can destroy other, other relationships that you have. It can eat you away, even though it's, it's not your fault. Right. It's just, it's what happens, you know? You can't control that. You can't control death. Right. So that, that's really what, I think losing my, my chihuahua really made me understand. Because in that, that period where she was gone, like, the moment it happened, basically, that's when I was starting to accept it. Whereas in the other moment, I, I, was, I was angry. Like, with my first <laughs> loss, I was angry. Right. And it, it didn't feel real and I, I couldn't accept it. Mm -hmm. But with, with uh, my Chihuahua, I had to. Yeah. Because I, I knew that the more I blame myself, the more I blame the circumstances, it's not going to change anything. Right. Yeah. Nothing's going to change. So you can't, you can't beat yourself up over how you grieve. Uh that's right. And that's what I wanted to get into um, 
eventually was, you know, the grieving, um, how it is important in the process of acceptance. Yes, yes, don't beat yourself up for how you grieve, how you process, you know, um, because you're still on that journey to acceptance and everyone's journey to acceptance can look different um, and oftentimes does. Yes. Okay, something that I also wanted to uh, get into as another uh, whole uh, aspect of acceptance, um, excuse me, of the process of acceptance. When that process of acceptance is coming from rejection. When, when you get rejected, whether it's anything, and then you have now have to process that acceptance. Some, depending on what it is, everyone's different. You know, it could take a snap of a finger. It could take the days, weeks, months, years. Um, you know, I got rejected from both of my PhD programs. Uh, yeah, update, you're... folks. Uh, it's because I didn't have my master's in social work. My master's was in criminal justice. No, I disagree with that being the reason. Only because, you know, in my undergrad, um, social work, sociology, and criminal justice, they were all under the same college. All under the same um, college. Like, if you go on your degree audit or check your grades, it's, at the top it's going to say Criminal justice, social work, sociology, all together. Um, the thing about that is maybe it is different when it PhD programs are looking for the master's degree. I don't know, whatever, um, because because I easily got accepted into every school I applied to for master's degree in social work, even though I had an undergrad. The point of the, the matter is... Um, Though that did hurt, and I remember speaking to you about it, Eric, it and I was like, yeah, oh God. and I was like, oh, this is the calm before the storm. You know, the storm looked different this time, mm -hmm. only because I actually allowed myself to fully grieve, to fully be honest with myself, and that's the thing, fully be honest. I... After, after all these times in the past where I was able to eventually learn how to, um, you know, progress in the process of acceptance, you know, whatever was best for me, um, whatever my process was best, you know, whatever process was best for me, I eventually I had to learn that over, over the years. Uh, and I was able to finally be honest. And when I say honest, I mean the good, the bad, and the in-between. Kind of like, is the glass half, em half empty or half full? Um, it's both. Mm -hmm. um, we have to acknowledge the pain in order to see the purpose. We have to acknowledge if it's half empty, we have to acknowledge that it's half full in order to see the full purpose of the glass. To see, okay, areas of growth. Areas that are already I'm being good at, you know, kind of like, oh, it's empty. Okay, so that's an area of growth, but it's also full, uh, half full. So it's like, oh, applause to me that, you know, these are some of the good things going on. So anyways, I have to acknowledge that, yes, I'm hurt. However, I am also knowing that I need to work on control and surrender. These are two aspects that I have never been able to do. Obviously, from a traumatic childhood, you know, and me having to be in control and not surrendering obviously used to serve me. However, now I'm in a so much healthier life now. Thankfully, I am safe now. Um, me having control and me not being able to surrender, that no longer serves me. Those aspects serve an unsafe environment. Um, so those aspects are necessary. Uh, it is a survival mechanism. Those aspects are for unsafe environments. 
given my past was completely unsafe. Now, I am safe, and now those aspects are no longer serving me. So that helped me with my process of acceptance. It helped me to be... Uh, it, 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 it honestly, Eric, it honestly had to happen. I'm not even joking because honestly, between me and you, um, after spending time with just my higher powers, mm -hmm. my higher self, and just doing self-reflection, you know, just journaling, um, asking myself these prompts, look at me throwing in my book in there, these prompts that I also wrote down in my a journal that is on Amazon right now, folks. Um, Go buy it. Uh, uh, Yes, episodes, description below, will possess the link to go buy this, available in all territories, on Amazon, so you, wherever you are in the world, you can buy it, unless if you're in Russia. Yes, I, and I, I, I pause when I say that, because it's like, my contract doesn't even go to Russia, because uh, Spotify and Apple, they kind of cut ties with Russia, but anyways, whatever. Um, yes, so... <clears throat> After doing all that self-reflection, you know, um, I realized, listen, I need to learn how to not be in control and to surrender. I need to learn it. It, it is, though I, other than the mental illness, <laughs> I am, uh, I am in a better place in my happiness and my joy than I was a year ago, than I was two years ago. So um, obviously I I want to continue to progress. Um, I feel like control and me not surrendering, uh, Eric, is kind of hindering me from fully experiencing happiness and fully experiencing life. I feel like it's time for me. And now... Before um, I ask what your thoughts are on that, I do want to clarify um, that when I say control, for me personally, when I'm saying control for me, how this has shown up in my life, it has not been controlling others. It has been controlling circumstances, okay. you know, uh, situations. Yes, it has been that. Thankfully, um, I didn't struggle with controlling others um, um thankfully and i say thankfully because i that would have just been a lot of hurt that i would have had to you know eventually have to come to terms with have to process make a lot of apology apologies i would be hurt knowing that i hurt them you know what i mean so i'm grateful for that i'm grateful that that wasn't the case for me um yeah, Eric, what are your thoughts on that, on control and surrendering? And that's, uh, I mean, the way you put it, it makes sense. You know, I, I could see it. You know, it makes sense when it, it comes to terms with the, you know, rejection. I don't know, control and surrender. Do you feel like you kind of like a good grip on it or have you struggled with it? Or For me, I, I do. I, I did. And I still do. You know, control, I think of it as if it's out of your control, you shouldn't worry about it, you know. So that kind of ties into rejection. So you, let's say you get rejected from a job, right? You can't really, you can't control that. So you fuck those jobs. I, I'm just kidding. I just had to say that. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead, Eric. It kind of correlates to surrendering. So you just have to surrender how you feel. You have to let it out. Ooh. When it comes to things you can control. It's something that I guess it's the same terms with surrendering. You just have to either give it up or have more efforts out there. I think that's that's kind of what I'm I'm seeing with what you were saying with control and surrendering. It's something I'm learning because with things out of my control recently, uh, whether it's relationships or it's it's rejection, you know. Yeah. If I if I spend my time stuck in that cycle of the what if 
and the what could I've done better? You're gonna go. Sorry, crazy. I'm literally crying. I'm not joking. Are you? I really need something that she's yeah, something that she said. I like really needed to hear. Yeah, I mean, it's hard. Continue, it's hard. Continue. Yeah, these are tears of gratitude because I really needed to hear it. Because again, you can't really any situation out of your control. It's not your fault. It just isn't. You know, it's just circumstance, luck. Anything in your control, you know, whether it's your fault or not, feel it out. Yeah. And that, that's something I'm learning, too, because I've been I've been taught to just hold it in and oh, not really not let it out, you know. And mm. sometimes I wonder that's why I think I am like in terms of emotions, because sometimes I, I don't know what I feel. Right. Right. At certain moments. So it's think, odd. Would you say, because I'm half Latino, would you say that, are, are you Latino as well? Hispanic? I am, yeah, Hispanic. Okay. Would you, do you was it, because mine was, my, me being taught, oh, don't feel the emotions are for girls, yada, yada, yada. You know, that ignorant, low vibrational, detrimental stuff um, that, as we see, you know, now, psychologically speaking, now that we have a lot more knowledge than last century, we see that the body is supposed to feel in order to heal. Um, you can literally die, literally. You can literally die if you don't feel. Um, fun fact. So um, it's a sign of sh strength to be able to face your emotion. But anyways, I'm going to, I'm going to get to something else too. Uh, but Eric, uh, so when I was taught, oh, uh, don't have emotions pretty much. Um, that came from, um, from, uh, men just teaching that. That also came from my culture, AKA machismo. Mm. Would you, would, would you say yours was also cultural or, or just society-based? Yeah. I think it was cultural. I'm not even, I can't even sugarcoat it. It's just, it is. Yeah. You know, with Hispanic households, that's where you, that's sometimes where you will grow up with. Yeah. Especially if, if their grandparents, or if their parents, you know, your parents' parents, your grandparents, uh, if that's how they grew up and that's how they taught them, it's going to be the same way. And mm -hmm, I think right. it, it's up to us to break that cycle. And yes, now, yes. now I'm, yes. I've given that up. You know, I, I have to feel what I feel. Right. Just, just getting Someone's out of. Someone's got to break that generational curse. Yeah, you know, just getting out of a relationship, which I thought would last forever. Uh, yeah. Yeah. How can you not? You know that that's when I I lost it. I, I couldn't keep it in. Right. Because I see myself as an emotional person. I do. Yes. You see yourself as human. Yes. And that's the thing. Humans have emotions. We are humans first before we are, before we are, uh, have a, a gender assigned at birth, before we are male, before we are female at birth, before we are um, male and female at birth, because that, that can be a thing. Um, I know a lot of people that know about that. There are people that are born both. In fact. Yeah, yeah, that's literally a thing. Um, we just don't talk about that <laughs> in society. Uh, society doesn't know how to address that, and they're afraid to address it. But anyways, yes, we are humans first. You know, I, this whole thing of be a man, be a man, be everything but human. I'm just like, that That makes no sense. You, the, <laughs> like, yeah, and something that you mentioned, Eric, I just want to give you some honor and some props right now, dude, because... You face your emotion. You made, you took the stand um, to start to face your, just to be human. It takes a lot of strength to be human. You know, I, I was having a conversation. Oh, and this is going to really, um, I feel like this is going to be eye-opening for a lot of, specifically, I don't want to say just males. I want to say people that were taught 
taught toxic masculinity in a sense. Um, and fun fact, I realized last year that um, women can be taught toxic masculinity growing up, depending on their household. They can be taught to be this tough thing. And I was just like, oh, wow. But anyways, um, so I had a conversation with someone and he, he's also Hispanic, you know, um, so he also, you know, was raised with the machismo, you know, type of mindset, a.k.a. toxic masculinity for folks who don't know. Um, and I, I told him, I was like, you know, growing up, men would say, if you run away for, for if you run away from a fight, you're weak. You know, if someone's ready to physically fight you and you run away, you're weak. You know, um, or if you back down, you're weak. And so I told him, I was like, if you ran away from a fight, would you consider yourself weak? He's like, yeah, that's weak if you run away. And I was just like, I, and we were really close. So I was able to tell him mm -hmm. what I'm about to say next. And I was like, you run away from the biggest fight there is, and that is with yourself. I told him, I was like, so based off your theology, your theology, your philosophy, if you face a fight, you're strong, but if you run, you're weak. And I was like, society and the culture has taught you something completely false. You know, um, I got the science and the psychology and the biology um, credentials to prove it, you know, mm -hmm. also I got your own philosophy to prove it. You know, I was like, dude, you run away from yourself. You run away from the, the most important fight that there is, is with the self. You have to be able to be one with yourself, you know? And so I, if I could go back in time and tell all those bullies, <laughs> if I could tell all of them this, I would say props to you for not running away from a fight. You run away from yourself, though. So you don't want to call yourself weak, right? And I don't personally think that they're weak. I say that they have just been taught wrong by society or they, I, I feel like Toxic masculinity did not start with us. It started to us. Because mm. we were just born into this world and these ideologies were taught to us. We, we, didn't, we didn't come in toxic masculinity. You know, so I want to say that to give everyone grace. Um, and to also give that other perspective that we aren't taught. You know, um, and, and, and our parents and our grandparents, they didn't know no better. It started to them as well. Um, so they didn't know no better. However, as we become more evolved as just humanity, as each generation brings higher vibrations, we are able to, you know, um, be honest and break some generational curses. Someone's got to do it. It's got to be us. Yeah. Yeah. And a little quick tidbit. I'm going to go more deeper in it. Folks, this is important. And I know y'all hear me say this a lot. But there are more, um, according to statistics, um, I'm not ignoring those who are non-binary. I'm going to speak statistically. Um, just to help prove my point. Statistically speaking, there are more women in America than men. Okay? However, men make up 72 to 80% of the suicides in this country. On average, that is 75%. And within the next 10 years, it is projected to be 80 to 82%. Okay? Talk about um, t talk about not 
feeling to heal. Talk about being taught toxic masculinity. You know, um, a lot of the suicides, you know, um, and this is this is qualitative research. What I'm about to say, this next statement that I'm about to say is qualitative research. Um, long story short, folks, stigma equals suicide. And what is that stigma? Men should not have emotions. That is that false stigma that is killing, literally. Majority of those suicides are due to a form of stigma. Okay? There's mental health, but men are taught. Oh, don't face that. So, folks, it literally can kill. Okay? And and and, and that's how it, it, it works. When, when you don't face your emotion, it, it can be good for you temporarily, not everybody. Um, but a lot of people, it, 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 it doesn't go away. It remains dormant and you think you've just gotten over it, but literally in like 30 years, it literally comes back. The brain is very powerful. Um, and I, I promise you folks, um, when it comes to Facing a lot of things. Face it first before it faces you. Yeah, face it first before it faces you. For example, like I just said, like, it will come back. It will resurface. For example, trauma. Oh, my God. Oof. That will literally resurface. And I mean literally out of nowhere. At the, Like, you could be at the age of 50. And you could not have even thought about something. You just kind of suppressed it, pushed it away. Um, and then literally like 30 years later, boom, you wake up in the middle of the night with a panic attack. That literally happens. We see it happen more often than not. It is unfortunate. And unfortunately, around that time, around that age, is where we see the increase in suicides. So it all goes together, folks. And it's all very... Very important. So that's why I want to commend you, Eric, for facing it, though it took a circumstance. And that's what it's that's what it takes. Uh, it takes a circumstance for those of us who weren't taught to face our emotions. Man. Eric, you're one of the strongest men I've ever met. Thank you. Yeah, I, I'm not perfect. You know, I, I'm still. Oh, no, you're not. No one is I'm still learning. I'm still learning how to deal with, you know, with trauma. Yeah. I'm and it takes a start. Perfect. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to deal with it in, in a healthier manner. Yes. And if it's and, and that's how it starts. Yeah. You know, if I have to say something to feel better and to face it, then run away from it, then that's something I've been doing and it's something I will do. Yeah. Because like yeah. you said, you can't hide it forever. It comes right. back. Right. Exactly. And, and and facing it can look different for everyone. You know, it can look it can look like facing it little by little, literally, I mean little and I mean small little by little. It could be big chunks. It could be in, in, in any type of magnitude as long as it's being faced and you don't have to face it perfectly. You know, you got to just allow your body to try. You know, and eventually it'll just progress you know you'll learn more ways more coping mechanisms just more self-reflection you know it can be therapy it can be doing a hobby you know something healthy for the body to do not necessarily saying a distraction um but just saying you know one of your healthy defense mechanisms to allow the body to um love you enough to face and to purge out all of the trauma, because that's what the body does. It purges out anything that um, is, well, mentally, there we go. Mm -hmm. The body is purging out, and I say brain and body, is purging out anything that's not serving us. However, it doesn't always know how to do that in the most healthiest ways. Hence, that's where we see addiction formed and stuff like that. Um, so it can be up to us. It can be up to research. It can be up to therapy. It can be up to us just talking it out with ourselves. It, 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 we can face it in many of ways. And it doesn't matter how small. You just got to start. You got to try. Um, and if you need help trying, therapy's there. Mm -hmm. Or it's going to take the circumstance. And that's the thing. No shame necessarily on folks who just get ramsacked with it at 50. 
you know, don't let that be your end. If you're like, whoa, where's this coming from? Please go to therapy. Go to therapy. Do, 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 do not handle all that on your own because it's, pin, it's, it's pent up, which means all those years it's had time to gain its strength so it can come back and punch you harder. Go to therapy. Go face that with someone. Go to a safe space. Go try. Please do not try to do that on your own. You are too old to do that on your own <laughs> by yourself. That It will kill you. It can literally kill you. Um, yes. Eric, I'm so proud of you. Seriously. You have inspired so many people by saying that. This podcast will be out there forever. In 10 years from now, Eric, you saved someone's life. You did that. Not me. You did that. Because of what you said. Yeah. We we got on this topic because of you. In your words, you said you did that. So in five years and five days from now, Eric, you saved someone's life. You did that. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate it. And I, I don't see it, that way, but it's it's good to say that again, I couldn't hear you. Sorry. No, I said I don't see it that way, but I, it's good to let people know that they're not alone. Yeah, you're not alone. Anxiety, you're going to face depression. You just gotta gotta handle it in a healthy way. Yes, yes, and, and, and that's huge. And, and that's okay that you don't see it that way. Uh, that's just huge. That is one of the main points, and this is why I love that Eric just shared what he shared because this is this is the root of the podcast is someone could be on their way home right now to end their lives but because they listen to an Eric they decide okay I'm not alone or wow this person's like me I'm yeah like okay I, I can I can do this that's a Hispanic male who's facing his emotions I see myself in him or I hear myself in him. That means I can do it too. You know, instead of them being like, okay, it's it's just time to end it. You know? So, yes, Eric. And that's fine. You'll you'll probably never even meet these people on this earth. The person that you save, you just might be someone's um unseen angel. You know? But um because of you, Eric. They either got encouraged, they got healed, they got inspired, they, excuse me, their life has been saved, and then they can go on and help save other people's lives, you know, because of you. We love that. Uh, Eric, is that the night before Christmas behind you? That, that, that on the hanging on the wall? Okay, where did you get that? I want one. I'll be honest with you. I do not remember. <laughs> I just I found it. I found it in a, in a storage, and I just hung it up. Oh my gosh, that's so cute! I want one. I want one. That is like really cool, and it's like it's like a really good size. Oh, that's perfect. I want one. I'm sure you'll find one in any Halloween store, maybe Spirit Halloween, when that time comes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The seasonal stores. Those are. Oh, yeah, those are the ones, man. Those are the ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Eric, this has been a a, 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 a magtabulous time. I don't think that's a word. But the word now. You're using con it's a word now, and we're using context clues. Uh, it has been a magtabulous time. Before we uh, end this episode, do you have anything to say? Um, don't give up, you know, keep, keep going because I, I faced, I faced hell the past six months and I thought it was the end, truly. And I, I really wanted it to be because it was yes. that overwhelming, but you know, later, I'm still standing, you know, it's not, I'm not perfect. Emotionally, I'm still I'm still fighting, you know, certain demons. But uh, okay. don't give up, you know. Keep going. Yes. As much as you want to, there's people that care for you. They'll always be here. Go to them, because you never know. They they will help you. Yes. I've even had strangers help me. 
during this time. And I, I, I thank them. I, I'll give them every, everything just because of uh, what they did for me. Their words, they, they helped me. So don't give up. Yes. Wow. 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 Yes, that's, that's right, Eric. No pain goes in vain. That's right. That's right. Yeah. If pain thinks it's going to come over just for no reason, no. I'm, give it no. hell. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thanks, dude. We appreciate that. With that being said, I have a pre recorded outro. So let's just get to that. Hello, everyone. Before we end the video, I would love to uh, announce, and I am proud to announce, that my second book is available now on Amazon. Um, it is called Wounds into Wisdom self-awareness interactive journal notebook with prompts if you love learning about yourself if you want to you know um go into more self-awareness if you want to talk to your inner child if you want to just talk to yourself and you know uh find out new things um this journal notebook with prompts is for you it is interactive it has spaces where you can you know, doodle or draw anything that symbolizes, you know, the prompt, um, you are able to interact and conversate with these prompts in the journal notebook. And it also has space at the end for you to just journal if you would like to just journal. Um, but yes, these prompts in the book are very wise and thought provoking. Um, it will make you think, I have never thought about that before. I did not recognize that in my life until now. Um, these will blow your mind. These will drop your jaw in a good way, in a good way. Um, but yes, the link to purchase the book is on Amazon. The link will be in the episode description below. Also, thank y'all so much for making it to the end of this episode. I challenge you to send this podcast to at least one person. You never know whose life you are going to save by sending this podcast because they might send it to someone else who really needed to hear it and that person's life will be saved because the remember the point of this podcast um in general vulnerability time is what if someone's on their way home to end their lives but because they listen to a special guest or to me um because they listen they decide to live even if it's just a little bit longer. This, this is a life-saving podcast, folks. And yeah, thank y'all so much. And I will see y'all next time for whatever episode that will be because this is a pre-recorded outro. Already love y'all tons. Stay amazing. I'm proud of you for still breathing on this earth.